G'day folks. Well, it's time to get into the rest of the engine. Now I've had a bit of a look at the uh, top end. Uh, we'll have a closer look at the cylinder head though. I've started taking some valves out. But yeah, on closer inspection some of these cylinders have some interesting marks on here. Possibly due to the dieseling. Looks like uh, this duller spot here is probably from the uh, crown of the piston. These bits here. Yeah, I don't think so. That, I think that's... Um, Sorry, no, the crown of the piston had come all the way up to the top, but the um, the polished and somewhat peened grooves are probably from the piston smacking into the bore as it detonates, or as the fuel detonates on its crown. So it's a bit hard to tell. It's not physically noticeable, but there is an uh, interesting pattern there. So anyway, I've started stripping the head down. I'm not going to strip it completely, but I just thought I'd show you some of the valve assemblies. That's the spring, retainer and collet assembly. You've got two little collets in there which sit up inside the valve like that. And they both, because they're tapered, they uh, lock into the inside of this tapered collar and that stays there until you put something underneath the uh, head of the valve and depress the spring by the collar, not by the stem, but by the collar pop it down and then pull the collets out and that's what I was using this bead breaker lever for it's sort of my universal press I just put a piece of channel over the top of the collet push down and flick the collets out with the screwdriver and that's an example of a valve stem seal the seals on this engine have failed along with the head gasket making a very oily smoky start up whenever it had been sitting for a little while that's why engines often do a puff of blue smoke on start up then it goes away it's because oil's making its way past this down to the valve and into the cylinder or sitting in the um, sitting on the valve if it's shut. The exhaust valves are sooted and burnt to hell but this engine has been fairly well abused and the intake well it's just covered in dirt and carbon probably from the uh, crankcase ventilation or what was left of it but yeah, the valve stem seals are just a metal cup with a uh, rubber insert and a spring similar to a uh, conventional shaft seal. And they just press on top of these little uh, valve guides. And worn valve guides will also allow excess oil through as well. That's the bottom spring retainer, or seat I'd say. That goes on there and the collets fit in over the stem after you've depressed that all the way down fit the collets in release it and it all pulls itself together and stays there like that that's a fixed one whereas these ones here I've popped them up and released them of course if you're doing an engine rebuild you want to keep all these parts in the order that they came off unless you're replacing them all Yeah, the valve seats, not too bad. These have hardened seats in them. They're fairly reliable. But they do have a bit of scoring and pitting on them. Yeah, that one's really oily. These centre two, I believe, had failed stem seals, although the heads of these valves aren't as oily as these ones. So I'm guessing the stem seals on this one's all right and that oil's just come through from the high pressure gallery where that blow is in the head gasket. Same there. Even the coolant passage adjacent to it's a lot dirtier than the ones on the uh, good cylinders. So it was getting a fractional amount of oil into the coolant, just not enough to be obvious. It probably explain the strange smell, the unusual smell of the coolant. Yeah, that exhaust valve seat's black. She was running pretty hot when I was running that Jet A1. She flame cooked it. <laughs> well, there you go. You can see the guide the seat and the valve. It's a neat little invention. Hasn't changed much in over a hundred years. They only open a short distance. I imagine this would be a non-interference engine. If the cam belt snaps the piston won't come up far enough to hit the valves. Even if the piston comes up flush with the block bottom of the head. Yeah if they only open that far I'd say it's a non-interference 
but if these valves were actually flush with the head and you had really shallow piston crowns or really high lift on the cam like they came down that far smack the pistons gonna hit that hammer it up into the camshaft it it just destroys engines failed belts and chains chains can fail too nowhere near as often as belts but chains stretch and your your timing valve timing can drift as the chain stretches that's about the only downside of a chain whereas the belts yeah if you neglect them they snap and things munch themselves pretty bad so anyway enough rambling about valves and heads uh, I'm going to clean a bit more up around here and drop the sump that's already been well drained but yeah We'll drop the sump, have a look at that, maybe you know, take the rest of the front off. The oil pump can come off with it. Yeah, we'll do that tonight. I'm doing, the, doing this after work, so excuse me if I'm a bit rambly and tired, but I want to get this thing out of here so I can empty the uh, laptops out the back of the RAV4 and start dehumidifying it because uh, after all the rain we've had, I've noticed a few spots where water's getting in still, the stitching around the windows, unfortunately. So yeah we've got to prioritize things and push ahead pretty fast okay before we continue more theory and a bit of well cranking fun <laughs> we are live so uh yeah this will spin fairly quickly it's a lot faster than if it had compression and a camshaft attached but you get the idea that the pistons move in pairs it's not one, two, three, four, it's two and two, if that makes any sense to you. So there's always two at top dead center, regardless of what cycle they're doing. Like this one here could have just fired. This one here is coming down and intaking. So the intake valve's open on this one, this one's fired. One of these two might be pushing, be ready to push exhaust out, and the other one might be ready to start compressing. So there's a, uh, four different points of the cycle, four stroke, four cycle engine and that's how these uh, four cylinders work, you always see a, a pair but yeah, the balls look pretty good considering the hammering they've had there are obvious wear marks even though you can see the honing um, it'll be the pistons themselves that are showing the most wear they're obviously a much softer metal and uh, yeah would have taken quite a hammering. Yeah, water pump's out for the first time in a while and this thing's almost too clean to have been getting exhaust gases in the uh, cooling system. But then again, the coolant's pretty rich, so it almost looked like oil. I left a bit to evaporate overnight and it didn't. It just spread out and stayed there. I had to wash the floor. So the syrupy coolant's probably the only thing that's kept this thing from rusting. That or it's just got somehow dissolved oil in it. A little bit of corrosion at the top where there's been an air bubble sitting, that's about it. And the pump itself's okay. Very old, I wouldn't trust it, but yeah, no sign of anything apart from maybe a little bit of lube oil coming out the weep hole. But yeah, normally when I see these things, they're all eaten and pitted and yeah, pretty ugly. So that's that part. Let's get the uh, sump off. Okay, well, got the sump off, and just like the engine, it's a sludgy piece of shit. I'm like, it is covered in gunk. This engine never had proper oil changes done to it. I'm surprised it lasted as long as it did. Everything's carboned up and sooted up. Yeah, I'll flip the block over so you can see it, but first I'm going to clean, well, get rid of this and the bodily fluids tray. <laughs> Any time I flip the block over, I have this underneath to catch all the crap that leaks out. Um, yeah, this gasket has been reused so many times. They should have bought a new one last time. It's already pushed through, squeezed out. It's covered in silicon and gasket maker and God knows what else. This thing's a hazardous materials bloody bin job. Um, yeah, under the oil baffle will be all more nasty more nasty in there yep that's going straight in the iny alley bin I'm not even going to bother taking the steel bits out of it it's not worth the trouble there's that much muck on it it's not even, not even classed as clean alley <laughs> there's probably half a kilo of gunk 
So yeah, just like the manifold, the head, the head um, camshaft housing, intake manifold, um, injection rail, all that junk. Ironie Alley, it's probably about, I don't know, 15 bucks worth of Ironie Alley. And then the transmission afterwards, maybe 25, 30 bucks worth of Ironie Alley. Not too bad. Cast iron's worth bugger all, it's worth the same as steel. This goes in the same pile as appliances and computers and other shit. So, yeah, a little bit of scrap metal, not much. Okay, there we go, we got the oil pump off. That's the uh, pickup with a coarse strainer on it. Uh, just a piece of steel mesh, essentially, inside that little pickup. Um, and it's a basic gear pump. Basically like a lot of hydraulic pumps and that sort of thing, lubricating oil pumps. Uh, direction of rotation, looking at it from this side it is counterclockwise. Uh, looking at the front of the engine it is clockwise from the harmonic balancer end to the front, front end. From the flywheel end it should be counterclockwise. So going counterclockwise all it does is pick up oil through there. You've got volume going in there. It gets squeezed in here. I'm sort of aligning this myself, there's nothing to align it. You get squeezed down and forced down into here, which goes through to the discharge passage and then off into the main supply rail through here, into the oil filter. Gets uh, filtered through and then out to the block as filtered oil under high pressure. Uh, I think the rough pressure would be like 50, 60 psi. It's not really high pressure like a hydraulic system, but it's high enough. It's a volume pump, not, a, not so much a high pressure pump, it just pumps lots of oil and floats all those nice plane bearings. It's plane bearings like to float on oil. They don't like metal to metal contact. And there's been a bit of wear on it, not too bad. It's the hardened face plate, it's just had a few countersunk Phillips head screws on it. And there you can see the low pressure inlet oil and high pressure outlet through there. That's the uh, pressure regulator essentially, that just prevents any overpressure as well as the one on the filter which is a filter bypass. Uh, if there's too much pressure in the system before the filter, that little spring loaded valve will open and dump back to low pressure and it'll just recirculate on itself. Um, It'll always allow a little bit to bleed under normal operation anyway. It's designed to do that. Otherwise this pump, even though it's not a dedicated hydraulic pump, this pump could build ridiculous pressure without any kind of bypass on it. And it'd work quite well as a hydraulic pump in some ways, as long as the tolerances are close enough. So yeah, that's an oil pump in a nutshell. Uh, the designs do vary. The old General Motors Holden ones had very tall gears and there were two of them counter-rotating, uh, sort of looked like a uh, supercharger but straight cut, a heli not a helical screw but a um, yeah, just a basic twin gear type pump, whereas this one here has a sort of a stator on the outside and a, a rotor on the inside, quite fascinating stuff. So that's an oil pump. I guess next up we will drop the crank and have a look at the internals. Thanks for watching.